Hello, very good evening to all of you. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to be with you once again. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, this lockdown period is being used for uh, constructive learning. And uh, I'm very sure that uh, in today's session, I will learn something from you. And probably you may also learn something from me. So let me just start my uh, presentation today. Uh, I would be speaking on uh, physical uh, stock verification of library books. So let me just uh, uh, share my screen with you. Uh, just a second, please. Yeah. So let me just uh, disable my video also. Yeah, so uh, this is the uh, first slide of my presentation, that is the stock verification of library books. And, uh, uh, you know, one scholar said that bad libraries build collections, good libraries build services, great libraries build communities. And in my opinion, you cannot build communities unless you uh, build good services and unless your users are happy. So if you want to make your users happy, obviously you will have to have processes in place wherein your users are able to get what they want without any delay. And these uh, processes could be developed in various uh, sections of the library, like acquisition, cataloging, circulation, store verification, and so on. So as I said, uh, you know, uh, today I'll be speaking on the stock verification of library books. So what is uh, stock verification? Uh, basically, uh, stock verification of library books is a periodic exercise to assess the availability of books that the library has purchased over the years. In other words, other uh, stock verification is the physical checkup of documents listed in session register. So what basically you would check, you basically check uh, whether the books which are there in the accession register are physically available in the library or not. So that is the whole purpose of physical stock verification. And why we do it? One, because there is a general financial rules 2017, which requires that every library has to do stock verification. And uh, uh, let us understand some rules also. So rule 215 of the General Financial Rules 2017 says that complete physical verification of books should be done every year in case of libraries having not more than 20,000 volumes. And then it also says that uh, for libraries having more than 20,000 volumes and up to 50,000 volumes, such verification shall be done at least once in three years. So first is that you have to do every year if your collection is uh, below 20,000 and if it is between 20,000, 1, 2, say 50,000, then you have to do the stock verification every three years. Uh, the rule also says that uh, sample physical uh, verification at intervals of not more than three years should be done in case of libraries having more than 50,000 volumes. But what the rule says, it says that in such case, Verification reveals, if the verification reveals unusual or unreasonable shortages, one has to do complete verification of the library. But what is sample verification? Uh, General Financial Rules has not specified it. What is unusual or unreasonable shortages? That also General Financial Rules has not defined anywhere. So let me just first uh, uh, try to tell you uh, about uh, the sample stock verification. Uh, how we should do it. Uh, let me just uh, yeah, so let me just uh, uh, explain you with the example. Say, for example, if uh, uh, your collection is 2 lakh books, then uh, if we decide to go for 50,000 books as sample verification, which is 25%. So it should not happen that uh, all the 50,000 books we verify from one or two subject categories. Uh, 
you see what we should do uh, we should uh, distribute this uh, 50000 into all the subjects that we have uh, say for example if we have 20 20000 books in computer information sciences then that is it we should do 10% of it so this is the percentage of all the uh, you know this i have actually made a template uh, so that you understand it better so the total collection is 2 lakh here you see and the books that one has to verify is 50000 okay and uh, and uh, so that is how you know uh, we do the sample verification so for example if it is uh, 3 lakh say if the number of books is 3 lakh so it is uh, so it is 16% of the total collection but you know i want that at least 50000 books should be uh, verified at least 50000 and why i say this because uh, it is uh, given in the rules of uh, the general financial rules which says that uh, you have to uh, very uh, do the complete stock verification of books if you have books up to 50000 right so let me just uh, go back to the uh, previous uh, screen yeah so uh, what is unusual or unreasonable shortages so I'll tell you in the next slides, you know, it says loss of five volumes per 1000 volumes of books issued consulted in a year may be taken as reasonable provided such losses are not attributable to dishonesty or negligence. So which means 0.5% of books uh, can be treated as reasonable loss. Uh, however, it should not be due to dishonesty or negligence. Uh, let me just uh, uh, show you once again how we uh, do the calculation for uh, reasonable loss. Just a second, please. So, for example, if the total number of books that uh, are issued in a year is, uh, say, 20,000. And the total number number of books which were consulted consulted in that particular year is forty thousand. Then the reasonable loss would be three hundred. Uh, similarly, if I don't have this consultation figure, if I just remove it, then my reasonable loss is just hundred. So it is important that uh, not just uh, we should take into consideration the books that uh, are issued in a year by the library, but we must also take into consideration. The books that were consulted by students or uh, faculty members so that is why i say it is very important that uh, we take into consideration the number of books that were consulted so just a second please uh, yeah so this also says that uh, the gfr also says that loss of a book a value exceeding rupees 1000 and rare books irrespective of value shall invariably be investigated and appropriate action taken but you know generally people think that uh, appropriate action means some kind of disciplinary action but it is not like that i don't think it is like that uh, though it may be like that uh, you see th th there can be uh, some actions with regard to the installation of cctv with regard to strengthening of uh, library security, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, uh, uh, I already told you what uh, is uh, unreasonable or unusual shortages. So, anything you know which exceeds five volumes per thousand books, that would be considered as unreasonable, unreasonable or unusual shortages. Now, when you start. Uh, 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 physical stock verification, obviously you first need to constitute a committee which uh, may be of uh, people from library, from finance, from faculty and maybe some of few other uh, sections of the university or the institution and that uh, committee may be headed by a dean or uh, some other senior person in the university. And uh, the librarian has to basically initiate the process of constitution of the uh, committee 
we see we cannot depend on the administration to tell us now we have to start the stock verification and we should do uh, uh, stock verification. So what I suggest is that uh, whenever you see that uh, if your collection is say for example three years uh, fifty thousand, so you have to do stock verification every three years and you have to initiate accordingly. And this uh, committee may also have a convener who will basically uh, update all the members about all the things which are being taken uh, during the process of stock verification. So once you know uh, we were doing this stock verification in our library, I thought uh, we should go just beyond the identification of uh, the number of books that have been missing or have been lost. So what other things we wanted, we wanted that uh, we should be able to check the accession number with the corresponding title because sometimes there's a possibility that the accession number and title may not match. And these things generally happen in bigger uh, libraries, especially university libraries. Then we also wanted to check whether the barcode the pasted on the book is uh, the barcode for that book only, or it has been wrongly pasted uh, on that particular book. Uh, then third, we wanted to check uh, how many are duplicate accession numbers, if any. We also wanted to check uh, whether all the books have call number, price, etc. We also wanted to check the status of the books. Say, for example, if in our database that uh, uh, we actually use Koha ILMS. So if it is written, transferred or withdrawn or say uh, written off, so whether that is actually correct or not. So we thought we will check the books for that also. It should not happen that in database, one book is uh, being shown as transferred, but we, when we actually see that uh, the book is available in the library. So we thought we will check that also. And of course, uh, because of the fact that we have several languages, uh, books in our library, starting from say, Urdu to English, Persian, Arabic, uh, Telugu, etc., Hindi, so we thought we would also uh, account for the uh, number of books in each uh, languages. But then the question was, how do we do it? So what we did, we actually downloaded the complete uh, uh, accession register from Koha into a CSV format, or you can say in Excel format. And then we, uh, uh, in that particular Excel sheet, we uh, added another sheet. Uh, and this is the uh, format of that sheet. Uh, I will just go to the next slide and uh, tell you a little more on that. So what we were doing here, here we were recording the language of the books. Here we were uh, scanning the accession number from the scanner, from the barcode. Here we were also writing the, or recording the rack number. So this say for example, this first four books were from L1 rack, and the rest of the books were for M1. And then here also, we wanted to check what is the problem with a particular uh, record. So uh, let me just now go to the Excel sheet to show you how we did it. Yeah, so this is the sheet uh, which uh, where we were recording all those things. And before I start working on this, let me just show you that we had a master sheet also here. I think uh, you are not able to see the Excel sheet. Just a second, I can just stop sharing of the screen. Just a second, please. Yeah, so this is the uh, sheet that uh, I wanted to show you. So here we were entering the uh, language in the language uh, column and say uh, plus English. So just pasting it. And here we were writing accession number. So I'll just uh, write 45. And here I can write uh, rack number. So I'm not writing it entirely. So, and this is the corresponding title with this. So, what was happening when somebody was actually scanning the barcode uh, 
uh, uh, in this uh, accession number was appearing here and the person who was scanning was also reading out the title so the person who was sitting on the computer he was actually able to verify whether the same title has been read out or not now similarly you see if i write some other accession number say 5 so that is uh, modern economics and in case uh, uh, there was some other accession number uh, in case the there was some problem with the barcode then it will show me a different uh, a title now the data uh, uh, which it is this sheet is fetching is from the master sheet so in master sheet you know as i said this is the complete uh, accession register where we have all the records of the database right so i'll again go to that recording sheet and say if i here uh, write some other accession number say for example three so it uh, shows me here that uh, this book does not have a call number so this particular cell is blank so there is no call number in the database for this particular book. So we were keeping such books aside so that we can take necessary corrective step, steps at a later stage. So let me just uh, write some other exception number, say eight. So here it is showing that this book is checked out. So which means uh, th there is a wrong recording in the Koha because this book was available in the library and that is why it's being physically verified. And uh, let me write some, say, other session number. So yeah, this it is showing that it is transferred. So basically this book is available in our library, but it is showing this transfer. So maybe it was transferred sometime back and then the book came back to the library, but necessary corrections were not made. So let me just uh, choose some other accession number. So if I say 45, so you see 45 is here and 45 is here. So it is immediately showing me that these are the duplicate accession number. So I can always uh, go back to this particular rack and get this book and both the books can be taken together to make corrections. So let me just last, uh, last number, let me type say for example 13. So here it is showing me reference section. So if this book is in some other section, it will immediately tell me that it is in the wrong sec section. So let me go back to uh, the, the, the uh, my presentation yeah so here uh, I've already told you just a second please You know, we are use, we were using VLOOKUP function of the Excel uh, and it really became very handy for us to fetch all this information from the master sheet. Now the question was how do we identify what were the missing uh, books. So what we did was that we merged uh, all the, uh, the complete accession register with all the verified books, all the books that were issued out, all the books that were sent for binding and all the books that were written off, weeded out, etc. And after removing all duplicates, we were left with missing accession numbers, or you can say the unique accession number. So let me just show you this uh, 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 Excel sheet also, how we actually did it. Yeah, so this is the Excel sheet where all the accession numbers are there from one to say 80, 90,000, whatever we had. And then uh, in the second sheet, we have written that these books were found, like for example, accession number one was verified, then we found that accession number three was checked out, and then accession number five was again verified. And then what we did, we merged all this data with the master data, that is the, or with the accession, complete accession register. So here, you know, accession number one is verified and it is there in the accession register also. Then accession number two is there in the accession register, but it is not found. So which means this is the book which is missing. And similarly, you know, there were other status etc. that uh, we merged and then we took out only the unique numbers. So uh, this is the sheet which actually gave me the unique 
uh, numbers that was missing number so this is how we actually uh, got the missing number data so next what we did uh, uh, was uh, was set see uh, we merged these numbers and then we found the missing numbers you know there's a, always a difference between the missing accession numbers and the books or the accession numbers which are showing as lost you know in uh, it is always better that uh, we conduct two to three stock verification and when we find that uh, some there are some accession numbers who are who are common with regard to missing accession numbers in two to three consecutive stock verification we treat such books as lost otherwise it will remain in the category of missing now say if i do first verification today and next year if i do second verification there's a possibility that the books which were missing in this year's uh, uh, stock verification so we'll be able to find those books some of them uh, we'll be able to find so it is better that we uh, uh, do at least three stock verification uh, to arrive at the conclusion with regard to the books that have been lost so we also you know uh, prepared a subject wise pie chart and this why we wanted because uh, we should be able to know that which are these uh, subject areas where more number of books are stolen by students and uh, 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 in such areas we should always add more books so that students do not steal books now the next question is uh, how do we do the depreciation at the time of writing of books so till 2012 13 uh, whatever rates were prescribed in income tax act we were following that and after that uh, there was a document by mhrd which came in 2013 and 14 which suggested that there will be only 10% uh, depreciation on library books uh, this this document also suggested that the residual value will be rupees 1 which means uh, what is the residual value i mean the uh, it will not be depreciated bit beyond uh, rupee 1 so any book uh, cannot be depreciated beyond rupee 1 then uh, with regard to the uh, books which we were, we were receiving on complementary basis uh, the document suggested that books received as gifts are valued at selling prices printed on the books where they are not printed the value is based on assessment so who will do the assessment i mean maybe the library committee can do the assessment of such books or there can be a sub committee of the library committee or maybe the stock verification committee itself can do some assessment and treat such books uh, uh, for further depreciation and this is how you know we uh, uh, prepared a template where we wrote uh, i mean this information we already had uh, accession number title etc and then then through a very complex formula we were able to calculate the depreciation rate uh, i will just go to the excel sheet and show you how we did this so this is that excel sheet which i wanted to show you you know all this information as i said we already had title author column the price year of publication so here through a formula you know we were calculating uh, the depreciation so here it says the uh, the value to be depreciated is 75 and in 1998 99 only 1 rupee 97 paisa could got uh, depreciated and why because this book was uh, purchased in march 99 1999 so there was only uh, few days for which the depreciation was to be calculated so you see every year uh, you know uh, it uh, was calculating the rate of depreciation on its own and uh, here you know the it became zero see in this year 2009 10 the value of that book became just a 0.01 paisa and uh, what we saw uh, in, uh, earlier that residual value is rupee 1 so it cannot go beyond One rupee. So this is the residual value here. And uh, if, uh, if I just if I just go down, and I will show you how, what was the total value of books and what was the depreciated amount. Please bear with me for a second. Yeah. 
So if you see here, you know, the total value, uh, the total appreciation, uh, once again, the total value is here. So the total value of books initially was 260,011. And then the total depreciation, which was deducted from the total value was 246,402. And this is the value left. But because of the residual value, the amount left is 14,391. This is how, you know, uh, how easily we could calculate uh, the depreciation on all the books that we had. But what is important is that we should have the uh, price of the book and also the, uh, uh, the date of purchase. Only then we will be able to calculate the depreciation effectively. Okay, so let me just go to the next slide. Yeah, here uh, we have only, uh, I've summarized what I just said. So the total value which is to be written off is rupees 14,391. Uh, then what we need is uh, prepare a report. The Stock Education Committee has to prepare a report. This, basically this work also has to be done by the librarian and the librarian should have necessary skills. Uh, to prepare the report because uh, unless the report is prepared in a uh, very effective manner, possibly it will not be able to convey what you want to the administration. So these are few things I thought I should tell you that these are few uh, areas which are to be included in any historical application report like introduction to general financial rules, then uh, methodology adopted for the software application, what was the depreciation method? What were the major findings, recommendations for writing off? And another very important thing which we should always mention in any report is that losses are not or cannot be attributable to dishonesty or negligence. Uh, only then, you know, these uh, books can be written off. If you don't write it, then there will be a problem. You can also say that considering the fact that the library follows open access uh, system, loss of some books is inevitable. And if you know some of the reasons for loss, that also you can mention. Like say for example, security gate was not working. Uh, there was no AMC for a certain period. The library got shifted from one place to another during last uh, many years. So all those things can come as the uh, reasons for losses. Yeah, uh, why I see you should mention uh, that uh, losses are cannot be attributable to dishonesty or negligence because the GFR rule says that loss of five volumes per 1000 volumes of books issued consulted in a year may be taken as reasonable provided such losses are not attributable to dishonesty or negligence. So that is why it is important that we write in that. Now the second uh, question is that, uh, see, uh, what about those books which uh, have been valued uh, more than rupees 1000 or rare books. So for such uh, books, there's a provision in the GFR that uh, it will be investigated. So for investigation, again, a committee has to be constituted uh, by the competent authority. And then again, that committee comes with a report having basic facts and uh, all other things which uh, you actually wanted to say or included in your report, you have to convince this particular committee that because of these things, losses occurred. And again, you know, same thing that losses are not attributable to dishonesty or negligence. This thing you have to convince the committee which has, which is investigating into such losses. Uh, so you, so almost the same thing what you have said in your stock verification report you have to say in that uh, to, to, to that committee also. So after three years of you know continued efforts, books were finally written off with the, the approval of the company authority. And uh, then what we did, we recorded all such data in our accession register. I mean all the hundred and, no sorry, 1032 books that uh, we had lost over a period of last many years. Uh, we recorded here as written off. And we also did that, uh, we, all, we also uh, threw a batch file uh, having the accession numbers of all the written out books. We imported this to 
Koha the software which was using instead of going and changing the status one by one. So what I uh, uh, want to tell you that uh, technology driven process always lead to accuracy. Uh, it avoids duplication of efforts. It increases efficiency. You can use staff in a better ma manner. And finally, obviously, it empowers library users in utilizing the library services or the resources. Because if resources are good, obviously, uh, if the resources are easily be accessible, then users will be happy. And that's what I said initially that for any library, it is very important that its users are happy. So, you know, we had a lot of pressure uh, when we were uh, doing the uh, stock verification. Staff was under a lot of pressure because uh, we had a lot of uh, issues uh, concerning uh, the stock verification. So we were like this, you know, when we all were doing the stock verification. But once, you know, these books uh, got written off, we were relaxing like this. So, uh, I mean, uh, you see, you should not be scared of carrying out the stock verification. I think it is a very easy exercise. Only thing you have to understand the rules, you have to uh, convince uh, people that, you see, that losses uh, cannot be attributable to dishonesty or say negligence i mean in some libraries it does happen but most of the cases it doesn't so you have to basically uh, be very confident in telling your administration or the management that it is a, a routine thing which happens in every library so uh, i always say that good libraries are staff driven great libraries are process driven and when you involve yourself in the work you know you get a lot of ideas, you get a lot of innovative ideas. And I always say that uh, uh, every staff of any library must get involved in the work so that he or she gets innovative ideas to improve library services because we are a service organization. And uh, before I uh, conclude my presentation, let me tell you that uh, Yusuf is my colleague who has been helping me a lot you know, in creating these complex uh, formulas in Excel. So I take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation for Yusuf. Uh, he's a very hardworking guy. These are some of the references I use. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope you liked uh, the presentation. And now I am open for questions. So if you have any questions, I'll be very happy. Sir, yes. yeah, uh, sir as uh, we have received few questions in our chatting. Can I uh, ask a few questions for clarification? Uh, please, please do, please do. Uh, sir, one question is that, uh, can you please tell us little more about the treatment of gifted books for the purpose of assessment of their prices? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. You know, what happens that whatever books that we receive as gift and uh, for the purpose of stock verification, uh, and then finally for the purpose of uh, writing of those books, we have to take the print price of those books into mm -hmm. consideration for uh, the depreciation or for writing of. But in cases where uh, the price is not given on books, then uh, we have to do our own assessment and accordingly decide uh, about the price. And this can be done either by, say, the library committee, there can be a subcommittee, which can decide that, okay, they say this book, let us make this book priced at 100, 200, uh, 400. I mean, depending on the assessment or the judgment of the committee, the prices, uh, I think, can, can be uh, assessed. And the same prices will be used for uh, the purpose of uh, see, depreciation and then finally, for writing of those uh, books from the books of account. Okay, sir. So another question is uh, this: uh, uh, You said that one should verify at least fifty thousand books. Why you have suggested fifty thousand books as the minimum number? No, you know the reason is that uh, uh, for a collection of say fifty thousand books. One has to do complete stock verification, right? The, the GFR says that any library which has uh, uh, books, say from 20,001 to 50,000, it will have to do complete stock verification every three years. 
so that is the that is the logic i am using for uh, at least verifying 50000 books you know otherwise if somebody asks us uh, uh, how did you fix this uh, formula of uh, uh, verifying uh, so many books so if i uh, take 50000 minimum number then i can always tell the person that look this is the gfr rule and uh, because of that i have done it so that is the whole purpose okay right sir one more question is this uh, reasonable loss is five volumes for every thousand books issued and consulted so how do you keep a record of books that consulted okay you know uh, what happens when students uh, come to library or when faculty uh, come to library they go to racks they uh, take out few books say if they want to get to only two three books issued generally what happens they will uh, consult at least four or five books so what mm -hmm. we tell all our faculty and students that they should not uh, do the shelving uh, by themselves so they should leave the books on uh, the tables which are kept there in every hall and there from there you know what we do uh, uh, in the every evening every day we uh, send a library attendant who uh, counts those books mm -hmm. and uh, accordingly see we keep a record and the record has to be kept with us in black and white uh, because this number we are using to uh, see, uh, justifying the losses so we have to make sure that we have recorded such uh, data about consultation of books in our registers or an excel sheet wherever so this has this data has to be recorded almost on a daily basis because auditor uh, can come any day and can check so it is better that we have all the data updated so that is uh, how you know we can keep a uh, data of all the books that are consulted and you know when uh, we uh, consider this data for the purpose of say uh, uh, making a number for reasonable loss uh, what we do is that uh, if we have uh, more number of consulted books which were consulted consulted obviously the reasonable loss will go up which is good for us i mean that is one way of doing it okay sir uh, sir one more question is uh, books carry annual depreciation as per the mhrd document hmm. then why we charge double or triple the cost of books when it is lost by the library users you know uh, these are two different things uh, why we charge double the cost or triple the cost of books which are lost because it is a deterrent for oh. our users that they, it should not happen that they uh, get books issued and they don't return it because it's difficult for them to get it from the market so if they have to pay the same cost or if they have to pay the depreciated cost obviously there will be more instances where people will take books from library and they will not return but if we if we charge double or triple the price uh, the chances are that they will not do it so and uh, i mean as i said these are two different things you see this is a deterrent and the other is when you are writing of uh, the value of books from books of account so mm -hmm. i think uh, one should not uh, get confused with these uh, two things they are completely different things the library follows the rules where you have to pay double or triple cost but when books are depreciated that are i mean we when we calculate depreciation that is for the purpose of writing off writing this, this is, it has nothing to do with uh, the replacement cost okay. uh, so should i ask another question sir yeah, please 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 uh, sir another question is uh, can you please let us know the reasons for duplicate accession numbers okay uh, you know sometimes what happens that a book is lost by a user okay and uh, he replace he or she replaces the book and then finally when we do the uh, stock verification it is found that the book which uh, the student thought was lost by him or her maybe there in the library here she must have forgotten that book in the library 
uh, and she was under the impression that probably she has lost that book. But uh, 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 the, the, uh, uh, so that is why you know when we do stock notification, there are duplicate. That is number one. Number two is that uh, sometimes you know uh, what we do, we do it by mistake because uh, uh, there are large number of staff who does data entry. So at okay. entry level also, uh, the mistakes could be committed. You know, we came across a very interesting uh, thing in our library when we were doing stock notification. There was uh, there were two books which had the same accession numbers, and we were not able to uh, identify why it is happening. When, but then later on, it was identified that it was a book when it was sent for binding. The binder, uh, see, he what he did, he got the book bound in two different books. So that is why it was showing two uh, same accession number for two different books. So there are various reasons, you know, uh, uh, and the major reason is the replacement of books. So I always uh, suggest to people that uh, when somebody uh, replaces uh, the book, uh, that book should have a new accession number, not the old accession number which that book already had. Uh, and uh, in, in against the old record, one should write that uh, in the accession register that uh, this book was lost and the new number is this. And when we give new number to the book, we must uh, mention against that uh, book that this is the new number and the old number was there. So uh, it, it is kind of cross reference. So it is very important that we, uh, uh, by this practice, we can avoid the duplication of accession numbers. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, one more question is, uh, which function of MS Office Excel you used for fetching data from accession register Excel file to the template? Okay, you know, uh, I already, uh, during my presentation, I already said that uh, Yusuf uh, has been doing all this work and uh, he uses VLOOKUP formula for, uh, uh, see, uh, See, when we do stock verification from master data to uh, fetching data from master data to the new template, we use VLOOKUP formula. So that is most of the time it is used. But then we use other for other some other formulas also, uh, simple formula formulas like plus, minus, etc. So I always say, you know, this uh, using Excel is very very important in the library. Every library store staff should uh, learn uh, how uh, Excel is used. Because I feel that if people start using Excel sheets, then a uh, lot of their job will become quite handy. It will become quite easy. So mm -hmm. it is we look up formula which we generally use. Okay. Uh, uh, sir, one more last question is why students steal books? <laughs> this is the last question. Huh? Yes. Personally, I'll be very happy, you see, when I see students stealing books. Uh, because there are still some students who want to read by stealing books, which is I think, a very good thing. Uh, but as a librarian, uh, I think uh, I, uh, uh, it's, it's difficult to tell you the psychology of the students, why uh, they steal. And uh, unfortunately, I could never steal any book from my library. So I uh, do not understand the psychology. But obviously, because of various uh, see, of, uh, reasons, so for example, if I'm uh, eligible to get only four books, so if I already have four books, I need the fifth book. So obviously, you see, I may think of stealing the fifth book. Uh, so I think uh, uh, there, are, there are various reasons, but personally, as I said, I'd be very happy if uh, students uh, start uh, uh, stealing books. So I have to give account uh, for every uh, stolen book to the administration. Uh, uh, but yes, I mean, that was all. Any other? So this was the last question, is that okay? Yes, sir. It was the last question. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your uh, such a wonderful presentation. Oh, thank you, thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you, thank you. Okay, bye bye.